Hey everybody, I hope you guys are healthy and safe. So first of all, excuse my appearance. I know I look a little bit raggedy when I dress like this, but Hong Kong, it's undergoing a heat wave right now. It is very, very hot. And the last couple of videos you saw in which I shot outside running out and about, I was wearing a full t-shirt and I think I suffered like a minor heat stroke because I was very dehydrated the rest of the night and just felt unwell. Okay, so the footage you're watching right now is shot with the Sony ZV-1. This is Sony's new vlogging camera that got a lot of hype with the YouTube vlogging community. Sony's advertising this as a camera that's made for vloggers. And to that end, Sony has made three big important changes. The first of all is the screen can flip out and rotate and articulate in 360 degrees. It can face any direction. So now this is huge because I can see exactly what I'm shooting as I'm filming. Previously, I shot with with this camera, the Sony A6500, and the screen does not flip around. So there have been times when I recorded myself for like 20 minutes just to realize later, oh shit, like I cut off my forehead or like the background was completely overexposed. So now I can exactly see what I'm shooting. Those kids are having a lot of fun today. So that's the first major change. The second major change is this camera has a much improved microphone on top of the body that allows it to record sound without the help of an external mic. So the sound you're hearing right now is actually completely from the Sony ZV-1. I'm also wearing an external mic, but that's for this camera because this camera's mic sucks. So the sound you're hearing right now is just from this Sony ZV-1. The mic is omnidirectional, so that means it can pick up sound from any direction and it'll be smart enough to know when I'm in front of the camera and just capture sound from in front of the camera and hopefully minimize extra sound on the side. I don't know how that's going right now. So the third biggest change is called product showcase mode. That basically allows the camera to immediately switch focus away from my face onto whatever I bring in front of the camera, like that. Now you might think, this is pretty basic, right? But no, traditional digital cameras like this one right here, they're trained to lock on to a face, to focus on the face. And that means a lot of times if I bring a phone into view, it won't focus on the phone because it's locked to my face. That's why a lot of beauty vloggers, you know, they, they review a lot of small items like lipsticks. A lot of times when they show the lipstick, they have to cover their face or move their head out of the frame. So it's a little bit silly to do that. So now finally, this camera allows them to show whatever they want to show without needing to hide the face because it will load immediately whatever they bring to the front of the screen. So these three changes are huge for vloggers. And on top of that, the camera is actually pretty good. The video quality has been pretty nice. And because of the one inch sensor, which is relatively large, you're getting a very natural depth of field effect too. So right now you see my background is slightly blurred. That's completely natural bokeh from that one inch sensor. And that's what differentiates shooting with a real camera from a smartphone. If you shoot with a smartphone, you still get background that's completely clear. And in professional videography, that looks not professional. They like it if you have a little bit of blur in the background. So that's all the pros of the Sony ZV-1, but there are two major complaints I have with the camera that really pisses me off actually. It almost made me want to return this camera. So the first problem you probably have already noticed is that this lens is just not that wide. It's really tight. So this lens is a 24 to 70 millimeter. So that means at the widest focal length, it's only 24 millimeter. Now keep in mind, because this is not a full frame camera, this 24 millimeter is not even a real 24 millimeter like on a DSLR. This is actually like more like a 28 or 30 millimeter. And if you ask any vlogger, that's probably a little bit too tight. They prefer something a little bit wider so you can get more into the shot. Right now, as you can see, I'm shooting just handheld with my arms fully extended. And this is still a little bit too tight because you know I don't want the camera that up close to my face. Now, maybe it's because I'm, I'm not that good looking. Maybe if you are a much more good looking vlogger like these people I'm showing here, they don't seem to mind the camera being so tight because they look good. I mean, if I look that good, maybe I'm okay with the camera looking like this too. But you know, I have bad skin, I have acne scars, and my teeth are kind of crooked, so I don't really want a camera like this. And this lens is not changeable, so there's nothing I can do about this if I'm shooting just handheld. The only way to alleviate this problem is to put it onto a selfie stick or a gimbal so I can further extend the camera out a little bit more. So now the second problem is stabilization for this camera sucks. So when I have stabilization turned off, 
So I'm just gonna walk and you should see very jerky footage. Okay, so now I've turned on the stabilization to the highest level. This is completely electronic, so it's EIS. And as you know, when you shoot EIS, it crops in a little bit more. So now the lens is even tighter. So this is not even like a 28 millimeter. This is like a 30 millimeter. Way too tight for vlogging if you're just holding the camera in your hand. And even then, stabilization is not that good. It's a big improvement from having it turned off. But as you can see, this is not that stable. I can get more fluid footage if I shoot with an iPhone. Like I'm just walking slowly right now. If I walk a little bit faster, you can see clear jerkiness in the background. And this is the highest stabilization level. So I'm really disappointed with the tight framing of the lens and the lack of stabilization. I can get better, more fluid videos from any modern smartphone, to be honest. I mean, just take a look at the test footage right here with the iPhone 11 Pro Max against the Sony ZV-1. I think the iPhone 11 Pro Max has much more stable footage. And keep in mind, the Sony ZV-1 is the one that's being billed as a camera for vloggers, for vlogging. Fortunately, there are accessories that can help the Sony ZV-1 become a better vlogging camera. This is one of the best ones, the Ji-Yoon Crane M2. So this is not new. This has been out for about half a year or nine months, I believe. But this is the smallest gimbal possible for a proper camera. Now there are smaller gimbals around, but those are for smartphones. For a proper camera, this is about as small as it gets. And it is more than powerful enough to handle even a larger camera like the Sony a6500 that I'm shooting with right now. Okay, so the first thing you have to do is screw on the Sony ZV-1 into this quick release plate. And then you can attach the camera on like this. And then you have to, you should balance the camera a little bit before you start the gimbal. But to be honest, it only works right now if I turn it on. But by balancing it, basically you want the camera to kind of look like this, even if I'm not holding it up. So the first thing you do is, you just have to adjust, adjust these arms a little bit by pushing it out to find that balance. See, so right now it's already kind of balanced. It's pretty easy to, to set up a small camera like this. Yeah, this is already pretty much balanced. Oh no, I have to adjust, I have to, I have to address the fact that the lens, that the screen comes out. So you see, I have to balance it again a little bit now. Okay, pretty much balanced. Okay, so now I just need to turn on the, the GN screen M2. The switch is right here on the right side. Okay, now the gimbal is on. So now I should be able to smooth ultra fluid footage even if I run actually. Let's try it. So let's begin recording. Should be much more fluid. Now I'm just gonna walk really fast and I'm gonna run. So the Korean M2 is very easy to use. You have several modes to choose from. Right now I have pan follow, which means the gimbal will follow my movement left and right. I can change it to point of view. So now this will follow me every point of view, including looking up and looking down. So this is probably more ideal for vloggers because now it'll really just uh, look at whatever I'm looking at. So this is the third mode is lock. So when you're locked, that means the camera will point at one direction no matter how I move. You see right now, it's been locked to point forward. So I can move like this and the camera's locked one way. So now this is where the second benefit of using the, using the ZN Crane M2 comes in because I'm now, the camera's on a stick. So I can hold it at the end of the stick and I'll get a little bit more, um, more space between the camera and I. So now, slightly wider frame is still kind of tight to be honest, but it's a lot better than handheld. Now, I'm using this to shoot myself. There's also obviously the natural way, which is to use it to shoot traditional methods. So this is a much more traditional way to use a gimbal. You can do a lot of nice fluid shot like this. So now I'm gonna try to get one around this Sony A6500 camera. And you see video footage capture of the ZV-1 is pretty good with a nice little natural depth of field 
okay. So we'll test the state by decision some more. I'm walking kind of fast right now. Okay, now the G and Crane M2 sells for 200 US dollars, so that's not that cheap, especially since my last GN uh, gimbal that I tested the Smooth X, that one's only like 40 bucks, but this is almost professional quality level gimbal. It can hold not just this tiny Sony ZV-1, but also a larger camera like the Sony a6500 that I'm shooting with right now. That's a mirrorless camera, so not quite a DSLR. I believe the full payload, which means how much weight this motor can support, it's 1.6 pounds, so you have to calculate whether your camera and lens setup can work on this. And it'll work with any smartphone too, so you can put an iPhone on this, put a Huawei phone and get more fluid videos. And the whole package is pretty portable. This is really light and it fits into a box like this. So basically with just this gimbal, which fits inside this box and this Sony ZV-1 camera, which is like the size of my wallet, that's enough to help me capture smooth and fluid vlogs. I don't even need to bring an additional mic if I don't want to because the mic on this camera, it's, it's not bad, it's pretty good. But obviously, if you want to up your game a little bit, then you want to use an external mic too. So that's about it for this video. I really wanted to love the Sony ZV-1, but ultimately the flaws are just really annoying. Like the fact that this lens is so damn tight. But I think I'm still gonna keep this camera because the pros outweigh the cons. As I said, video footage captured with this camera and still photos actually look pretty good. And it's so small and so light that I can keep it as a backup second camera, even if I upgrade my main camera system down the line. Probably not anytime soon, but if I upgrade, this will still be good as a backup camera. It's also a good camera to film overhead shots of unboxings, you know, like on top of a table. So I think I'll keep this around, even though I'm really disappointed with the fact that Sony called this a camera that's made for vloggers, but this lens is so damn freaking tight. So anyway, that's it for now. You see, even in a tank top, I'm completely drenched in sweat already. Hong Kong is just unbearably hot right now. I hope you guys stay safe and healthy and uh, wear a mask if possible. I know some of you guys are gonna ask how come I didn't wear a mask. Well, I wear a mask when there's a crowd. Right now, everyone's kind of far away, so I think it's safe to take it off. But if there's someone right here right now, I would put on the mask for my safety and for that person's safety. So yeah, that's about it for now. Thanks for watching, stay healthy.